Hello. Um, today I'm gonna be continuing my um math marathon. Last week, here I'm gonna find the video just to make sure I have it. But I made a a video based on um like advancing my knowledge on things, which was a little different. But today I'm just gonna be doing a normal one, like a part six now, technically. So, I'm going to be finishing the three last lessons, trigonometry or integrals, trig substitution, and intrication in the world. And trig, trigonometry, and integrals definitely will be hard. The, mm-hmm. Trigonometry, trimmy, trigonometry. Intricals. One way of seeing the need for trigonomic intricals comes from a simple application a flickering light bulb. An incendent light bulb hooked up to an alternate current will flicker because the current oscillates in time i t equals i zero sine t or frequency t. Here, I0 is a constant, and W is related to the frequency. We normally don't notice this flicker. Instead, we preserve a short average, which looks like a continuous stream of light. What is the average current over one cycle of length T is determined by the formula. So... Mm. It would be t, and the sum of t and zero. And w t equals two pi. I don't want to go be a pi answer. Well, obviously, I can't even type that. W t equals two y. I mean two pi. I mean, would it be like six or or seven? I mean, if they don't have a freak, a W or a frequency equation in it, but we also want the derivative, which of course we do. But I'm gonna go with seven because I'm really stuck in this. zero. Maybe the bottom equation. I don't know, I guess they didn't give us really that much number, so. If we plug IT equals I0 sine frequency time to the formula for the average, we find, let me look at the equation. Mm-hmm. So we can eliminate there. Mm-hmm. What was the question again? Okay. Mm. Okay, let me there. No, okay, I get it. So, when T1 simplifies the frequency I0 over 2 pi, since that's what T is, then we can eliminate the W's. Just do 2 pi and 0 over I0 and 2 pi. Using the U substitution, frequency time equals U. The integral of sine over one period is zero. For the, therefore, the average is zero. Mm-hmm. Since we don't perceive a flickering light bulb is always dark, we clearly need a better method for averaging functions that oscillate in time. A possible step in the right direction is the root mean square value. Well, true or false if the equation below or I R M S equals the equation below, then I R M S is also zero. Well uh, I kinda of looks like a different equation, I guess. Hmm. 
I'm going to say false. Okay, then. Yeah. I, I saw a second power. Yeah, it's only... Turns out that IRMS is not zero. Explicitly, we have IRMS equals the equation. The graph assigned to the second frequency time looks like an unending chain of identical hills sitting on the t-axis. The integral over one period gives us the area under such hill, which must be positive. In this lesson, we'll explore how to find this integral and other trigonometrical integrals that arise in real-world situations. We'll focus on technique that will unlock integrals of these forms. Sine mx, sine nx, derivative x, sine mx, cosine x, x. Sorry. Cosine mx, cosine nx, derivative x. So they could either both be together or both not. I don't know if it matters. I guess it doesn't matter which way they are, though. Mm -hmm. Where M and N are positive integrals. I mean, integral. The key is Euler's formula, which e to the i x equals cosine x plus i sine x, in which the i is equal to the square root of negative 1, which would be considered imaginary. One of the most important formulas in modern mathematics. Euler's, Euler's formula can be used to write sine and cosine in terms of a complex exponential. And exponentials are easier to work with than trig functions because of the laws of exponents. So let's write co sine and cosine in terms of complex exponentials. So, Euler's formula tells us that e to the i x equals cosine x plus imaginary sine x, or square root of 1 times sine x, and e to the negative i x equals cosine x minus imaginary sine x. We x subtract these two equations. So, cosine x plus, ima plus imaginary sine x minus cosine x minus imaginary sine x was cosine plus sine minus cosine plus sine including including the imaginaries of course we get two imaginary sine x so oh yeah cosine eliminate and it's just two i instead of just double i to the power right? so sine x equals i x minus e to the i x um over two i or this equation which this is the answer of it what's the correct formula for cosine in terms of positive or negative i x well obviously it had to be imaginary This one minus, but we just rather the opposite. Why not the i? Like, I was, I was definitely confused. Why don't you include an imaginary symbol? If we added, add e to the i x and e to the negative i x, we find e to the i x plus e to the negative i x equals cosine plus sine plus cosine minus sine, which equals two cosine x which cosine equals e to the i x plus e to the negative i x over 2. Oh, uh, because they don't include the imaginary symbol. Okay. I was like, what the? But, like, sine is the one that has that imaginary. Sine is just more important. Right now, at least. But they're both still important. Let's see why Euler's formula is so effective on integrates of the form sine mx cosine nx. Write sine 2x cosine x in terms of sine x and sine 3x. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, write sine 2x cosine x in terms of sine x and sine x. Sorry. Mm 
Well, obviously, one over two. Like, sh- that makes it easier, at least. Like, sine two x cosine terms of sine x and sine three x. In turn. Here, I'm not cheating, but I want to see what. I better not come up with the answer. I only want. Yeah, of course it doesn't. Well, I'm not using those apps. Mm-hmm. There you get calculator. Right to cosine in terms of sine x and sine three x. Cosine is positive, or sine is negative. It'll most likely be negative. And so are only negative answer. Mm-hmm. Sine three x plus three sine. I don't know if that would make that much sense. Huh? I definitely need to get it explained. I always become I always become confident when I get the answer when I go into the next question. It's always like a completely different topic. I need to have like quizzes where they have like like maybe like after like the easier like lessons. That they have like a quiz with like three or four questions that have like answers and stuff. They really need to take this into that. It's going to be that part hard to just be going to explain everything. You could add three questions on another topic, but I definitely need to explain. Okay, so what's positive? How they do it? Uh, so they wanted to do it in terms of sine three x plus and sine. So that's where we could receive this. That's what in terms of. And then we have the, I believe, the equation, yeah. It equals e to the i2x minus e to the negative i2x over 2i. And then times e to i. So the ix plus e to the negative ix over 2. And... And sine, since sine is the one with the 2x, so it's obviously more important. And then we use that, we add the, here you see why. Mm. I guess we could eliminate the eyes. I don't know why we go to 1 over 2, though. So it goes to two i sine x plus two i. So we start with one over four e i three x plus e i x minus e negative i x minus e negative three x or negative i three x, which we. In terms of sine, 
Oh, so that's the like equation we use. So the sine three x is just like a placeholder since in the beginning e's, and then just sine since sine is. Hmm. Yeah, definitely good for you. Yeah, the accent. Mm. So, here, I'm gonna try something. I know this is not related to the video, but I have, like, an AI app that can give questions. I usually do to check my answers. And it's usually right, and especially in these advanced questions. I can't really ask anyone to, like, be checking. Like, cake checking. So, let me find the AI app. Just give me a second. Mm-hmm. Just do your word. Let me see if they get the question right. Well, I don't know if this will be in the way we want. I see they're doing a lot more. Sign. Yeah, actually, is it? Yeah, it is. Because it's 1 over 2 times it, but you could just do 2 under and then the equation. I believe. Well, I, I probably need an answer because I'm not 100% sure. So I know there's extra parentheses too. So just in case, like, if anyone was still watching right now, maybe you could give an answer in the comments if the AI is right. Yes, I believe it's right. Um, and I'm going to save it, I think. I don't want another. But I'll save that equation. I don't know if I should watch it now. The videos are usually kind of cringy. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Question AI Video. Let's dive in and solve yeah, this problem okay. step by step Try together. That. To rewrite sine of 2x sine times cosine of ut x sine. We start by using the double angle identity for sine, which is sine of 2x sine equals 2 times sine of co x sine times cosine of x o x stack. Next, we substitute sine of 2x sine in the given expression with 2 times sine of e 2x sine times cosine of e 2x sine. And since there's an extra cosine of x sine, it becomes 2 times sine of 2x sine times cosine. No Hi at everyone. Welcome. Next, to express cosine squared of ux sine in terms of sine of ux sine, we use the Pythagorean identity, which states that cosine squared of ux sine equals 1 minus sine squared of y ux sine. After substituting cosine squared of ux sine with 1 minus sine squared of e t. I didn't skip the, is this the one that got the right answer? Mm-hmm. I guess so. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Question AI Video. Let's oh, dive in and solve this problem. Next, after substituting co the triple angle identity for sine is sine of 3 2 x sine equals 3 times sine of 2 x sine. I keep asking if I can just skip it off. Hi, everyone. Well, finally, sub- Okay, so we start with sine two x equals two sine x cosine x. Substitute sine two x, 
we'll go to two sine x cosine to the second since we're switching the sine places pythagorean identity nor the two sine for now well cosine two it goes one minus sine to the second substitute two cosine to the second two sine cosine two actually equals two sine x minus two sine to the third power um your triple angle identity sine three x equals three sine x minus four sine x to the third solve for sine three and three equals three sine x minus sine three x or four and then final final substitution and then we could simplify i guess that's like very confusing but it gave the right answer i guess because that could be considered a right answer trucking on the sure is confusing though yeah anyway. Using the result of the last problem, complete the integral. So, is this cheating or I'm just learning? So, I'm going to take a picture of it and try to do the same thing. And, like, the point of this is not so I can get answers, so I can get more XP in this. So, like, I could learn, like, oh, like, how do you do this? So, compute. Four. Let's see if that's right. I'll be surprised. Mm hmm. You press that again. I get in a simple way of explaining it. Okay, you go three over two. Mm. I'm gonna get exclamation. Hi, everyone. Welcome to question AIV. Let me skip this. But Hi, I'm everyone. Welcome to question AI you video. Let's dive in and solve this problem step by step yeah. together. It's our we start by using the double angle formula for sine, which states sine of two x sine equals two sine two x sine cosine to x sine. Dot dot cosine. This allows us to rewrite the integral in a simpler form. Substitute C I of 2x sine with 2 sine 2 x sine cosine u x sine in the integral. This gives us the integral from 0 to pi of 3 sine of 2 u x sine cosine u x sine 2 dso xo equals 6 times the integral from 0 to pi of sine cosine. Cosino squared dwx ux dxon dx y. We use the substitution LSS equals cosino x i, which implies L do equals negative sinco x o and dx o a dot x o. This changes the integral to a new variable what just dot. The limits of integration change from e d x i equals zero to u x i equals pi to while u s equals cosine zero equals cosine pi equals negative one this gives us negative six times the integral from one to negative one of e two u s squared duju we adjust the limits of integration to get six times the integral from negative one to one of u l s squared two do dot two this simplifies the integral for easier calculation Integrate tailway us squared to get l frac u steri 3 die. Multiply by 6 to get 6 times u f frac u the 3 3 dot. Evaluate the integral at the limits negative 1 and 1. This gives us 2 times 1 cubed minus negative 1 cubed. Simplify the expression to get the final result. The value of the integral is boxed for. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm definitely confused, but it is right. So, I can't argue. I understand some of it, like how the u goes to the u to the third over three, increasing, but divide by the power. And then, 
I mean, that's the that's the intro going. I know how to do this trigonometry. Like, the hardest part is the rules of simplifying trigonometry. Like, everything else I could do but the trick rules. I have so many rules, which totally makes sense, but not easy. And I sort of complete the... Isn't this harder? Oof. Okay, should I go through another? Okay, I'm sorry. I have to do... Because I want to learn it. Like, I'm not, like, doing this excuse over and over. I mean, it is pretty accurate. I mean, I guess it's kind of like skipping it, but I could learn it this way. But maybe I should be doing this off camera when I'm recording. I'm supposed to be trying to do this stuff, not using an AI chatbot to get the answers. Yeah, it's all right. Because I have no I would never get that. So it's just zero. Mm hmm. Let me see the. Hi, he says it. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Question AI Video. Let's dive in and solve this problem step by step together. Start by applying the producto sum identity to sine of 3x times sine of 4x. This simplifies the expression using the identity with the equals 3x and b equals 4x. Since cosine is an even function, cosine of negative x equals cosine of x. This further simplifies the expression. Substitute the simplified producto sum expression back into the integral. This gives us a new integral to solve. Split the integral into two separate integrals for cosine of x and cosine of 7x, each multiplied by one half. Evaluate the integral of cosine of x over the interval from negative pi to pi. The integral is zero because the function is even and symmetric. Similarly, Evaluate the integral of cosine of 7x. It is also zero due to the function's evenness and symmetry. Combine the results of the two integrals. Since both are zero, the final answer for the integral is zero. Great job on working through this integral. Rem okay, so I understand it more. I'm going to try to do the next one, though. Oh, no. Of course. So we just done the second one. And you know, the second one is definitely hard. I have no idea how to do those. It's just that, yeah, they always come up with a new question. It's always challenging. Wish you the best. The next problem is we'll look at a challenging application of Eller's formula, computing the integral sum of sec, sec to the second x derivative to x. Let's take it one step at a time. Choose the value of C that makes the identity true. Equal to 2 times. Mm. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure. Hint. Here we got a pencil. So this is yeah. Mm. Yeah, I how do I not know this? At least I know some integrals. I know like twenty two percent of it. I'm gonna go with zero. Actually, two. No. Three. Two. I see why. You could pause it if you want to read this. I've got to be reading it too. No. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, that actually makes sense. 
Mm, okay. Okay. I just want to understand. If we follow the hint, our steps may look like the reverse of these. Like the N. Row. This. Like, just. Then factorize E negative 2 out of I. I X out of the denominator of the first term and similarly factored e to I X out of the denominator of the second term. The reason that this is the end result is easier to integrate. Assuming all of these rows of calculus still apply when dealing with complex numbers, calculate sec to the second extra to the x. So it would be negative one over. Mm. It's almost like they'd be positive. That simplifies them. Mm. Let me see what's the difference. It's either plus or minus. It's got to be plus. Ooh, you can see so annoying. Mm. This is really big, so. I'm going to take a minute to read this. Okay. Oh, I just understand it, but not understand it fully. Using other formula, I can simplify. So, of the last round's integration. Well, there was cosine of it. Wait, there was all the left. There wasn't any cosine. Oh, the derivative. Ah. Uh, it's a, well, it's an anti derivative, you could say. The derivative could attain a sec. C, yes. C E C to the second. I mean S E C to the second. In the last room problems we use Euler's formula to prove apps I mean the sum of S E C to the second x derivative of x equals tangent x plus c. It's worth measuring another way of computing the same integral. The quotient rule in the Pythagorean theorem shows that your I mean the difference over the difference of x times tangent x equals um, SEC to the second x, which immediately implies the sum of SEC to the second x to x equals tan x plus c. We've seen that e to the i x equals cosine x plus i sine x is quite handy in trig integral problems. Is exponential that are so much easier to work with. To close out, let's return to the flickering light. Oh no. So I T equals I zero sine um W T measures the current running through the light bulb for the problem below and T is identified be two pi or W. Calculate I R M S over I zero. Yeah, you better not, you know. Alright, you know, I have no idea, though. I would say I have no idea, so. After this, I'm actually going to stop pausing the math marathon, because I'm going to be taking, like, an hour or two to learn this lesson and actually understand it. And maybe I'll upload a new video, like, very soon. Maybe today or tomorrow, it's showing if I've learned anything. Which hopefully I will, at least about the above equations. Like these big equations. So I'm going to go with 1 over 2. Mm. Mm. You can take a minute to pause and how I can understand this process it's in my brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes 
somewhat sense. Not really that much, though. So. Next thing. Alright. So, somewhat simple. Not that much. And that's it. So, I'm gonna... Sorry, I have to pause it. I just gotta... Gotta try to catch up on trigonometry and struggles. And then... Maybe I'll try to learn about this more. But... This is as important. Well, it is important, but... Not as much as the trigs right now. So, I'm gonna go... I may post like a second video or may just cut it and put it apart from this. But thank you much so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I probably will put another part of this like part of the video. So my goodbyes right now isn't really gonna affect the or isn't an actual goodbye because I'll be having another video. A part of this. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to continue to watch because I'm going to probably post another video on this or just insert the video in about 20 seconds. So I, you know, let me finish recording.